Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia, here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing Shintoism. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Territorial Reserve Bourbon Barrel Aged Barley Wine L. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful, and that is by the Coop. I've lost it now. The Coop L Works in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, that's a pretty cool looking bottle. I'm kind of excited about this. It is. It, it, it's got a, unlike most beers, you know, wines will have a, a date they're made. Uh, this one has, a, it's a 2017 vintage, if anyone was wondering. There you go. Uh, I hear that was a yeah, but, rough but, year. No, <laughs> it so, wasn't 2008, you yeah. know. I mean, so, we can. It wasn't so, that. so we got a barley wine today. That that that's going to be. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. I follow an Instagram account that talks massive shit about barley wines, but also totally loves them. It's hilarious. I was gonna. Aw. You you lost. That was not you as. Lost it. No, that didn't. That was, that wasn't as exciting as I no, was hoping. No, I was really hoping for a good pop. All right. While you're pouring that, I'm going to talk a little bit here. Uh, we are doing Shintoism, uh, something I've wanted to do for a while. We've brought it up a few times. Uh, it's been a while since we've done any Eastern. It philosophy. is, and, and 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 we've been, you know, we've been uh, asked by some some of our our listeners, are you going to do more Eastern stuff before? So uh, I kind of wanted to get into is this. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shintoism is kind of a strange thing because it's, uh, it kind of fits as a religion and a philosophy. It's some a little bit different than we've seen before. Which seems to be a, a running theme with several uh, Eastern yeah, philosophies. Yeah, Eastern philosophies. Uh, people of Japan, I, 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 I found it on the wiki, which you know has to be right all the time, right? But the 80% uh, of people in Japan consider themselves Shinto. But that's roughly the same percentage of people that consider themselves Buddhist in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Japan. So you've got a situation where, where the religions aren't mutually exclusive. What do you know about Shintoism, just off the top of your head? That you know, what comes to mind when you think of it? Oh, let me try to word this right. Uh, there's, they have a, an appreciation and, uh, and believe in an energy, uh, in both animate and inanimate objects. I know, they, I, know they do. I worded that so poorly. I know. Poorly. I, I took a, uh, a Japanese civilization class in college because I'm a geek and I do stuff like that. Uh, but that was back in the dark ages. And as I'm reading over this, and, I, and I, I read a lot of stuff in this, I discovered that a lot of the stuff that I was taught, you know, 15, 20 years ago in college is not necessarily accepted anymore. Mm -hmm. Um Interesting. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of, of, of mixed thoughts in here. I was taught very, very, very clearly that uh, that Shintoism was an animistic religion. Animism mm -hmm. is just the belief that spirits inhabit everything. Mm -hmm. um, and everything I read makes me believe that it's an animistic religion. But most of your modern philosophers say that that's, a, that that's kind of a misunderstanding of what's going on here with this. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Uh, so you're going through this... What, what what Shinto is, it's this native belief of, of Japan. And the first time it was written down was somewhere around the 8th century, mm -hmm. okay? And it was probably an old religion then. But what I find interesting is when it was written down, uh, Shintoism, which, which roughly means the, the path of the spirit or the path of the gods or maybe the right path, you know, it kind of – it doesn't translate directly. Uh, even then when it was written down in the 8th century – it wasn't really seen as one religion. It was kind of a, a way of explaining a bunch of native religions mm -hmm. in, in, in Japan. And your Shintoists believe that, that everything has a kami. Uh, kami is, in, in English, would be translated as spirit or god. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where, our word com where the word kamikaze comes from. Uh, right. Kamikaze was, was like... Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was it was the vengeance of the gods coming in. It was a storm. It, 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 it was representing the storm god. Uh, but you have all of these different ideas existing out there simultaneously with 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 Kami, where there's there's uh, ancestral gods, there's nature gods, there's there's universal gods, and all these these things are out there at the same time, mm -hmm. and you can. 
the Japanese person would tell you that they could accept that all of those things exist and that you have to venerate all of those things while at the same time saying that, uh, you know, they're, they're Buddhists and they recognize, uh, recognize those gods. And that's, that's really hard for me as a Westerner to understand. But I guess the fact that Buddhism is polytheistic uh, makes it a, a little easier to, mm-hmm. to comprehend. But it, this, this is all shrouded in, in mystery. Where did this come from? Um, I remember being taught, and, and it's about 50-50 when you, when you look it up, that, that, that the original Shintoism was brought over from, from China, and, it, and you know, it grows, grows out of that. But about half the people today argue that that, whether that's even true. Mm-hmm. We have a bunch of, of, of ideas out there. So let's kind of look at the, at the history of this and, and, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of their, their background. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, is their, what is their creation myth and, and, and all of this stuff? Those are always so fun. They are. And as I'm looking at this, I found a lot of similarities between other religions that, that, that we've seen. Um, and I'm probably going to butcher these names. Uh, Ameno Minakanushi. Uh, Amen, Ameno Minakanushi is like the original kami, the universal God. Mm-hmm. Uh, they translate it sometimes as all father and sometimes it's translated as just the universe mm-hmm. uh, or the cosmos. This is what gave birth to everything. And uh, uh, Amino Minakanushi is is the god represented by by the North Star, and it's represented also by by, by the, the the seven major stars of the Big Dipper. And the thought was that this is the god that uh, that gave birth to to all the other kami's. Um, was the Zeus? Yeah, it was it, it, it was so the Zeus or the or, yeah or or uh, yeah yeah something something to that effect. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I was going to say, you know, a, a little bit of my reading on their gods that I found interesting, and maybe there's something you're going to go into, I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, is whereas many um, religions seem to be human-centric or even Earth-centric, it really seems to be Japan-centric. These gods and their actions were all for the good and creation and, and birth of Japan, the country. Yeah, well, that, and that's exactly why some people are saying that, that, that they're doubting this idea that it was a, a, you know, that it was a Chinese uh, uh, religion that, that came over to Japan for that, mm-hmm. for that reason. Although there are a lot of similarities here. Uh, because you, you, know, you get into this, this one great god, and again, it's Amena Minakanushi. Uh, Mino Minakanushi was male and female, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that, that, that's a, right. that's very much in the vein of a lot of Buddhist thoughts. Very much in the vein of the yin and the yang. I uh, was going to say, don't, don't get too excited about them being both male and female, because uh, that in no way uh, takes away from the male-female hierarchy they're going to build. They're actually going to say the male parts do certain things and female part does certain things. So yeah. it, it, it doesn't destroy that. It's just kind of a different view and that's on all it. well and good. I'm just saying that, like, in so many of the religions that we're familiar with, that's not the case. There's a father god in, yeah. in, in most of them. Uh, but, but this is still a very patriarchal religion in a lot of ways. Uh, but this, this one great god gives birth to, and I don't want to say lesser gods, because there doesn't seem to be a pantheon like, like Olympus. Right. It's not like uh, you know, uh, the one great god gave birth and now he's king over the others. When, he, when another kami is created, they are equal. They are, mm-hmm. they are, they, they are of the same, the same strength, mm-hmm. uh, at least for a while. We're going to see there's going to be one that, that, that rises up above the rest eventually. But their very creation, and, 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 and to mention what you were talking about, John, with the idea of this being very uh, Japan-centered, they talk about these these two gods, uh, Izanagi and, and Izanami, uh, which is the male and the female female god here, who uh, gave birth to to another group of gods, but another group of kami, and that kami was the Japanese islands. Mm-hmm. And they talk about how uh, they did this ceremony where where they came across this bridge from the heavens, and. Uh, 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 Izanagi, the, the the which means he who invites, uh, so, so the male god, Izanagi dips his either spear or sword, dips his weapon of some sort, his uh, bladed metal weapon, yeah, well, of some well, kind. or or you know there's a lot of there's a lot of phallic sim- uh, imagery in there yeah. there as Isn't well, there he, but but he he dipped this, this this spear or sword or or 
some phallic symbol into the ocean, and you know, and and up from it came uh, came, came the first two islands. What I yeah. really like talking about the, the 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 phallic symbol element of this yeah. is what creates the islands. I mean, he he makes a, a cut in the ocean, but what ultimately ends up making the islands is what drips off the end of his yeah. sword spear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, 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 but it's interesting to see this. The first time they do it, they don't do the ceremony correctly. And the first two that are that that are, that, that, are, that are created are faulty. They're uh, they're 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 evil or, or they're or they're bad in some way. I don't want to use the word evil because they don't usually they don't say good and bad or, or evil. And in, in but it's it's not it's not pure. Yeah. Aren't the first two always though? I mean, can't we can't we just agree on that? <laughs> I was the first. Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, point taken. Okay. Point taken. I don't know the the ones after after weren't a whole lot better. So. Uh, but I look at it and, and, and I see this where, where these first two two came out and, and, and they weren't they weren't effective so they were they were cast out they were cast away and they redid the ceremony the proper way and the islands the that ceremony. are Japan today are uh, you know are, are, are born and they are they are perfect in every way okay so the reason I like this story is because I think it explains the importance of ritual in Shintoism later on. Mm -hmm. It's something that that uh, that that is absolutely essential to it. Um, this is a religion that is that, that is built around the idea of purity and, and and purification and ritualism, and it dates back all the way to the to these foundational beliefs. If you believe that the gods even had to follow a ritual in order to have something come out right, then I think it's easy to to control people. I think mm -hmm. to to say, look. If the gods had had to take these steps, don't you think some steps must be taken by you? Well, and it, it's a very old idea. Um, when you look at original, and we can frame this in religion, we can frame this in gods, we can frame this in high priests. But when you look at the original idea of magic, the magic was in the ritual. It wasn't until way later when Westerners would start to uh, expand that power and make the power kind of... Uh, more modern understanding of omniscient where the very thought or idea or desire of something to happen makes it happen. That's a way later idea. The, you know, the idea that you you commit these certain ceremonies and magic happens was kind of the original magic idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's also interesting to me that, that, that you know, there, there's a step in here that happens when it seems like you can take something too far. Mm -hmm. Because after they create the perfect Japanese islands, they they, they they have a, a you know they, they give birth to all these other kami all these others and on the last one that they give birth to uh, the uh, the goddess uh, is a it, it I can't even say her name very well is a nami uh, she dies in childbirth mm -hmm. and uh, you know they, they try the other god tries to revive her Izanaki tries to revive her uh, fails to do this uh, and they say that this is what gave birth to bad consequences. Uh, the fact that, 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 that this god had died and not not completed the, the ritual properly. The god had, had not, not managed to this. And all bad consequences in the world came came out of this, this one idea. Now again, I want to point out that there is not there's not one belief on this stuff. So when you hear these stories, if you go, that's not the version of the story I heard, there's a bunch of versions of these stories, okay? But this is kind of the, the generally accepted uh, accepted idea. Um, they, there's also an afterlife in, in Shintoism, and the afterlife kind of fascinates me because I found so many comparisons. The afterlife is a, it's a dark, it's not a burning place like like like, like Christian hell, but it's a dark place. Uh, it's down in a cave. It's separated from the world by a river. It sounds a lot like the Greek concept of Hades and the River Styx. Yeah, it's more a, a musty, watery, cave-like place. Uh, and we see cave caves in a, in a lot of uh, mythology, East and Western. Um, and kind of what they represent: darkness, cut offness, isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, even, even going to your favorite cave of all time. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, oh, Socrates. Socrates um. cave. But we we see this imagery a lot. And you know, one thing I found fascinating: I, I was looking into this, and when I when I heard this, I actually had to do a little research on uh, Shintoism afterlife because many religions have uh, evolved their beliefs on death. 
to put a positive spin, right? Yeah. If if you're if you're good at whatever their goal is, ceremony, ritual, belief, spreading, war, then you get a good thing in afterlife. Shintoism really never developed this kind of positive spin on death. Um and as a result, what we see in the population is that many people will practice the ceremony of Shintoism, but at death at their funeral, they'll they'll recognize Buddhist traditions and, and kind of recognize themselves Buddhist in the well, death part. Well, and, and, and there's been some bleed bleeding from one to the other in here because yeah. because traditionally, you're right, Shintoism has a has a very negative view on death. Uh, they see the dead as as pollutants, as something that yeah. that needs to be avoided at all costs. As as you know, the when you're dead, you're gone. But that was the original idea. But it wasn't about punishment. It yes. was just you're gone. It you're, was, it, it was it, matter it, of fact. Something has something has happened. Something has gone wrong. You you you're moved on. But that's going to change. That that that's an eighth century understanding. It starts to change, and, and you start getting these ideas of. Um, of apotheosis, even in, in Shintoism, uh, and, and if you don't know what, a, what what that term, it's a Latin word, so it kind of doesn't fit well when you talk about this. But apotheosis is becoming a god, and they started recognizing that uh, that it was possible in some cases for someone to be such a blessed individual uh, under Shintoism and do everything right that when they die, they become a god, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a a much more Buddhistic idea than it is a, a traditional Shinto idea, but it's accepted in the religion now. Akin to a Western idea of a saint. Yeah. Uh, very similar to the idea of a saint, except I, 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 these people actually become gods on the on you know, on on the same level that uh, they recognize it. Uh, one of the most famous of these was a uh, a Japanese emperor, uh, uh, Emperor Ojin, and Ojin. They believe in the Shinto faith that when he died, he became the god of war, mm -hmm. uh, and they recognize him now as as equal to, to other gods. Well, I, I would argue that that's still the same as sainthood because if you look at the the evolution of of Western religion into a monotheistic uh, place, yeah, we change the words, but if you look at the ideas, we, we still uh, I say I say we the Western world still. Um, has a very polytheistic view when you start digging into the details. I mean, yes, you, you can definitely tell that 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 there's that there's a there's polytheism in the background somewhere. Yeah. So so yes, there is one true God, the the powerful one, right? But there's all these angels. Well, there's one true God, but he's made up of, of, of a trinity of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and there's these angels that are there, and beyond that... They have that, different powers and, and, and it, different jobs, and when you start looking at sainthood, you see us us giving them powers and jobs, the patron saint of beer, the patron yeah. saint of... Mm -hmm. and, and, and they really kind of replace the idea of lower gods. We don't use the word God anymore, but we do endow them yeah, with power, true. and we invoke them when I, we, we I, need that. I, I, I think you could... You could, you could explain it that way, but I don't think that's really the understanding of it. I think, I think the difference is these gods, these kami that, that, that are created in Shinto are created and all of a sudden they are equal to God. All the other gods, there's there's no, there's no hierarchy. But when there was one higher God, that was the most... Th there was at one point. Okay. But, but, but from that one higher God, as he created other gods, he created them equal. Okay. 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 So there's something a little different there. Okay. The hierarchy kind of disappears. What while in in most Western thought, you know, when a god creates another god, let, 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 let's even get out of Christianity. We'll come back to it. Let's talk about uh, in, in in the Roman and the Greek world. You know, when 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 Zeus Zeus uh, creates Hercules, Her, Hercules is a lesser god, and he he has powers, but his powers are granted him by another god. Uh, the, the the angels and the saints in Christianity have powers, but they still exercise them through God. Yeah, and they're There's a difference to there. The supreme God's yeah. authority. You know, something I find really interesting about uh, ancient Greek religions. We should probably do that show at, at one point. Um, is that w when they look at it, most other religions see the high God as the most powerful, and th they kind of reconcile this idea later, but. In their religion, the titans, the elements, the 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 evil part is actually the most powerful, and it's only through through some amount of, of luck and 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 banding together that the good can overcome it. So yeah, I, they overthrew the titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we really should do a show on that yeah. one entirely. Um, 
the other thing that happens here, and I've kind of touched on it, are are these idea of of um, family spirits, upiko, uh, the idea of when your ancestors die, they don't just leave. They're they're still there and they're they're still watching out for you. And I see a lot of comparisons with that, with uh, you know my own experience growing up. You know, uh, hearing, you know. Your grandpa, your, your grandparents are, they're with the angels now and they're watching out for you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, to me, the same concept. The difference is that they, these seem to be interfering in your life. Mm -hmm. And the other side of this is, is, is the Shinto's believe that if that person is not granted uh, a proper, doesn't go through the right ceremonies, the right rituals upon their death, or, uh, or they leave, leave something undone and gratitude wasn't given for it, then that becomes a mischievous kami because they're trying to they're trying to balance something, right. you know. And it's not necessarily that they were a bad person, but maybe just the fact that that you did something in your life, and then you didn't get the gratitude for it that you should have gotten for it. When you die, you become this mischievous kami that's that's that, that's trying to uh, uh, recover that somehow. Kind of the the, the uh, Western idea of a ghost with unfinished business. A ghost, or even uh, in, in I, I think there's comparisons also in the uh, in the Middle Eastern world with the jinn or the genie. You know, there, yeah. there's there's some some comparisons there, and you know, uh, a lot of this stuff as I'm going through, I, I it makes me wonder if there's not something programmed into us, because. There, there, there's there's a shared mythology back there. We have different names, but there's a shared experience. Somewhere. Yeah, I was, I was actually about to bring that point up, so I'm, I'm really glad you did. Of, you know, it's really easy in the Western world to tie it together. And well, this idea clearly came from here and evolved through here, and there was trade here, and there was trade at some point in the Eastern world. But for a long period of time, there was much more isolation between Western thought and Eastern thought. Going back. <sighs> To really ancient times and migration patterns, right? You get one more. And I'll um, take it. <laughs> and so we see this divergence, and we see the idea still there. So then my question is, and I don't know that there's an answer on this podcast. Did those ideas come from the very root? They were already present in the groups that migrated both ways, and they just kind of evolved, and it's so far back we can't trace it. Or as you said, is there something deeper more inherent a shared experience a pre-programmed thought whatever that is that we find with death with afterlife with our connection to, to our connection to our ancestors that goes both ways one that we want to remember our grandparents and i think part of the reason we want that is because we want our grandchildren to remember us yeah yeah and, and i think i think there is i think there's there there has to be something shared so, so, something pre i don't even want to say a shared experience although i think that's probably accurate but there's something uh, inherent in our biology i think that makes us seek to explain things and want to be remembered yeah and uh that 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 seems to be something that 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 comes up over and over and over again now we know a lot of people that have that have managed to 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 break that today. You know that that, that are not finding the, the, those answers like that. But I wonder if you look if if you look deeply enough, if you'd find that even in your agnostics and your atheists, if you'd still find that somewhere in there where there's that idea of trying to to explain something like that. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I I think probably. Um... I think there's probably a, a deep need for connection. A lot of them turn outward toward toward uh, astrology, Philanthropy. which yeah. is 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 interesting. I, I've I've actually seen some interesting pieces on how astrology gets gets undue amounts of recognition and funding um, for the amount of good they necessarily do for the world because of you know fascination and and how big a, a deal it is to us. And I, I wonder if that's part of the driving force there. However, I think that part of the movement is kind of a rebellion, a bucking against, whether it's due or not, whether it's right or not, um, against these ideas of the magic. So I think they, they probably wouldn't. Maybe not that they're not drawn toward the idea. Maybe not that it's not an appealing idea to them, but that it goes against their their rebellious nature toward the idea. Does that make yeah, sense? I, I, it does. But you, you use the word magic there, and I and and uh, I I wonder about that word 
because I, I wonder if we don't replace one magic with another. Mm-hmm. You know, magic is a way of explaining the unexplainable. But honestly, uh, if you ask me to explain it to you, the microwave is magic. The, uh, you know, uh, there, there's all these objects out there that are, that are, that are, ma- I can't explain them. They're magical to me. And, 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 you know, I, I wonder about that kind of stuff. Well, no, 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 Is I've, science the new magic, you know? Well, and I, I've argued there's a definitional issue with nature versus supernatural because whenever we talk about the supernatural, we talk about angels or gods or magic or mind reading or, or whatever that thing is that's supernatural. The problem is the supernatural can't exist definitionally because let's say that tomorrow we discovered there was an all-powerful God or there was an afterlife separated by a river or there there was whatever this thing is that we call supernatural today. It's well, now natural. Yeah, yeah, the point that, that we've, we've understood and explained it, we then document it scientifically and we say this is how we know that and it's a natural phenomenon. So we've now taken something that is very clearly and definitionally supernatural and said... Well, that's just because natural just means the just, way the yeah. universe works is yeah. the way things are. And once we, we determine that that's the way things are, we then write it off as not supernatural anymore. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, it, it's interesting to me. The uh, moving back into this idea of, of Shintoism, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Amaterasu Omikami a little bit. Uh, that is, you know, I've, I've been kind of harping on that all these gods are equal, but something happens. Um, it, there's an evolution in the religion where one god does emerge as more important than the others. And that's the sun god, Amaterasu Omikami. Uh, and Amaterasu is, uh, you know, it's represented by, 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 by the sun. It's that, that disc in the sky. So important that that's, that that's the flag of Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they have that god on that flag. That's something that is essential to them. And they believe that the emperors are direct descendants of, uh, of Amaterasu Omikami. That Amaterasu uh, gave, gave birth to Jimmu, the first emperor, and there's been a, a direct line since Jimmu to the, uh, you know, through the emperors to, to today uh, in, in Japan, which is uh, something a little different than we're used to. It's, you want to talk about an old, old family of, of, of uh, royal family. This is something that's... Um, that that that's very very powerful. Do we believe it? Do we believe that this family really does go back that far, or are there some some we, people playing with power? We we are fairly certain that 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 the Japanese royal family well it dates back as far as we have records. Okay, you know they're, they're, it's the, been the same family that whole time. Now the problem is that those first emperors Jimu Jimu and those guys we don't even know if they're historical figures or not. But as long as we've known about a historical emperor of Japan, that same family has been in charge. Okay. Now, there's been times when they've been more important and less important. You had the shogunate rise up where they had the warlords that ran things and the royal family were puppets. But they've always come back and they've always been this this, this thing. And that was Regardless of, of their power, they were always revered. Yes, they were always revered. Uh, I, I draw a comparison there with like the Dalai Lama and and stuff like that in Tibet. You know, there there's no nation there anymore, but there's no you know they're not really re- leading a nation, but they're still they're still direct descendants of this stuff. Uh, well, that's a little different because it's not a bloodline descendant; it's a spiritual descendant. Yeah, but, but you same same concept. Yeah. Okay, uh, but this is something that 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 is so ingrained in the Japanese mindset that it's what allowed. Uh, the militancy of of Japan in the in the early early twentieth century, late nineteenth century, to to emerge, you could have a system where where God tells you to do something and 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 you must do it. Uh, and, and and I wonder about I, I wonder if if in the modern era if that could happen. The emperor is still there, but he seems to be much more of a, a figurehead since 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 1945 but he's still a religious leader of their country so we're, we're kind of talking comparison between the uh royal family of england yeah uh he has a, yeah there, there, there's there's probably there's a lot of comparisons there uh you've got a it's a weird situation where you have a you, japan is a constitutional republic now they 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 are but they're a constitutional republic with an emperor uh in that, that and a that, birthright emperor, not a birthright a, yeah. emperor, which is something that's that's really unusual, really unusual. Um, so I, I I kind of wonder about that mix of mix of of modernism, because Japan is a very modern nation in so many ways. 
Yeah, well, and it, it, it's funny. It, it really speaks historically to me. If you want to really enjoy your life, amass a lot of wealth. If you really want to uh, enjoy your life, maybe a little bit less the beginning, but have secure your future, secure a following. That's interesting. Uh, and and, and it, it also makes you wonder if you're not, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> If you're that kind of person where you've, uh, you know, where where you've got that that birthright power, even if you're not in power, are you st a threat to the system all the time? Yeah, well, and and you know, we we, we see this um, even even in modern Western circles, not to the same extent. They they didn't secure it to the the same degree. Look at the Clinton Empire. Look at the Bush Empire. Yeah. Kennedy. Look at the Paul Empire. Yeah. Ron Paul and, and, and Rand Paul and, and and the following there. And and yes, they're they're not presidential. Uh, uh, we we've kind of thrown cast that out and, and we, we kind of pat ourselves on the back. We didn't elect another Clinton. Good for us. But then look at the Clinton Foundation and look at what they're running on local levels. Look at the Bushes. Here in Texas, yeah. having the last name Bush is about a ticket into off in whatever office you want. Look at the Pauls and 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 look at the 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 nearly religious following they have. There, there's a, a controversy going on right now, where where somebody has stated that the the National Party didn't want Ron Paul to be the the, yeah. the National Convention. Not going into all the details and craziness of that, but the point is, just the very thought of that has created an uprising among people who just follow this person, and it's it's. It's amazing to see that while as Westerners we have rejected that on a national level and pat ourselves on the back, we kind of accept it in much smaller circles um, ourselves. Yeah, I think we do. I, 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 again, I think it comes back to this idea that there's something intrinsic in us that looks for something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just I wonder about this kind of stuff. Hey, I want to move into some different uh, types of Shintoism. I don't want to call them denominations because they're not quite the same thing, yeah. but that, that is a pretty good comparison. But before we do that, do we want to talk about this beer a little bit? I think it's about that time. Yes. All right. Who would like to start this one? I'll start this one. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll set us off on a on a, a cadence that will either either propel this beer to new heights or, or show us one of these ones that gets a, a wide range, I'll say. Um I really like this beer. I, I think it's well put together. I think it's smooth. Um, it's a barley wine, and you can, for right or wrong, it, it, it tastes like it rides that line between a wine and a beer, which you could argue it's a barley wine. It's supposed to. It's got some, some fruit notes in there. It's got a, 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 it's, it's a weird transition. It's a smooth transition, but it, it's an unexpected transition, I'll say. Between a very sweet front end into a bitter, hoppier back end. See, I thought it was more of a sourdough back end. You know that it's, it's not a sour. It's a very bready taste. It is bready. I do understand yeah, that, but but it, I'm not getting sourdough. But yeah, it's it's very it's 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 full bodied in the mouth. Uh, Carbonation is not really high. I mean, we heard that when we popped the bottle, and and it's it's kind of held to that. Uh, the biggest place where I'm going to knock it <clears throat> is that this is a uh, bourbon barrel aged barley wine, and I'm not really getting the woody notes and the the bourbon notes that I would expect. Yeah. From a bourbon barrel aged product, and so that's a little bit of a disappointment just from the very fact that I had an expectation when I opened this bottle. Uh, but of while being it, bowled over by it, yeah, yeah. But while it wasn't that, and it's not sharp, it doesn't have that alcoholic bite, which was surprising for the ABV. What this 11. is a eleven point three, and I, I am shocked at how smooth this is. Um, but with all that, while there was some surprises and some things I wasn't expecting, it was overall a great product. And so with that, I'm going to give it a four point three. I'm knocking a little bit for not being what I expected it to be. But it was a kind of a, a, a weird, pleasant surprise. So 4.3 on my end. Okay. All right. You or me? I'll go. Um, I really like this beer. Um, this may be 
this is definitely one of my favorite beers that we've had on the show. Um, I think, it, to me, it tastes like liquid sourdough bread cooked in a wood fire, or baked in a wood fire oven. You're getting woody notes out yeah. of it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I do. Um, not as strong as, um, as some of the other bourbon barrel aged beers that we've mm -hmm. had. Um, I don't know if that is because of the stronger focus on the wheat, um, or if that is, has anything to do with the higher ABV. It's definitely not as pronounced as it has been in some of the other beers that we've tried, but I, I do taste it in there and, and it's an incredibly pleasant experience. Um, with that, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Four, four five. five. Okay. Oh wow, you you came over me. Interesting. That, 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 that's interesting to me. Uh, I you know y'all y'all said a lot about this that it, and, and I can't really knock anything anybody said. I think this is a a great beer. Uh, the you, you pointed out that it that it wasn't really heavily carbonated. I don't. I think you're right, but it didn't need it. Yeah, it's I got agree. A, it's got yeah. a great flavor. There's a smoothness to this that I really like. There's a, a creaminess that I that that, that 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 I really enjoy. Uh, you you not that uh that you, you weren't getting that that bourbon barrel out of it uh, and I am getting a little bit of the bourbon taste I I can taste that in there but what I'm not getting is that that alcohol burn yeah. that you get in so many of them and I think that's a good thing in this case mm -hmm. I don't like the alcohol burn in a bourbon barrel a lot of times I like I like the taste without that without that so I think they I think they got the chemistry right on this one. Um, this to me is what a bourbon barrel should taste like. Uh, it, it, it's done well. There's honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know what I I can find to hit it on. Uh, the 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 bitterness on the on, on the backside is a little hoppy, but it doesn't bother me, yeah. it, which is shocking because you know I, that's not yeah. my thing. Yeah. But it, it doesn't bother me. It fits. It's very smooth. It yeah. fits. The flavor profile is a nice bell. You know, you've got this, you know, it comes in, it rises up, and then it goes away very slowly. Uh, I, I just, everything about this beer is uh, is a really, really good are, quality. Are we about to hear Mike's first five? Uh, I, you're going to get close to it. You're going to get close to it. You're going to get a four, six from me on this one. Um, Damn, John, why'd you rate it so low? Uh, I know. Yeah, I, I, and, and, you know, I when, when I was tasting this, uh, I picked that number like the second sip I had. That's what this beer is. That's what this beer <laughs> yeah. is. And I'm sitting here the whole time going, I, going. These two guys are going to hammer me because I've got this Why? high number. Uh, well, because that's how it usually works whenever I go high. This is an outstanding it beer. Is. Um, yeah, for all the critiques I made about it, you know, I'm I'm almost nitpicking at this you, point. Well, yeah. That's one of the things we do is we try and find what's wrong yeah. with it. And and I I couldn't I couldn't find anything that that was really wrong. I want to look at the design on your. Oh even, yeah, that's even from beautiful. The, even from the the bottle design, which which I think is part of the experience of a, mm. of, of a drink is is you know what, what does it look like? Does what does it make you feel like? And I was excited when I saw this bottle. So. Yeah. Uh, just everything, everything is good about this. Yeah, we, we were too. And uh, I'm going to say this, and I'll, I'll get back to the bottle. Uh, the reason I, I, I made especially sure to mention the low carbonation is because it has one of these wire traps on it that is usually there to prevent the cork from popping out yep. from high carbonation. So that that's what really shocked me about yeah. how low the carbonation was. But back to the bottle, um, we actually already had a beer for this week. We, we were stopping a new store that had some, some craft beers. And we we went up there, and we were going to get a... We we're actually just going to browse, see if they had anything good, and maybe get a craft beer, and maybe if they didn't have anything good, go to our regular spot and get something else. And we ended up walking in there, and uh, we walk out with three craft beers, and uh, it was actually the, uh, the weekend after my birthday, and I was going to, you know, have a few drinks and celebrate, and I said, okay... Which of these are we buying for my birthday? And which of these are for the show? And they were all so good. We said, you know what? We can't do this. These are all for the show. We <laughs> went over the wine section. We got some wine for our birthday. <laughs> and we said, we we cannot. These these all. So I'm really excited about the beers we have coming up in the next few shows. There's one of them that I'm going to say I'm not as excited about. of the the, the This show and the three next. Uh, but we have some high expectation beers. I want to say excellent because we don't know yet. Um, that we stumbled across, and I gave up my birthday beer because... Oh, come on. You got bourbon barrel-aged wine. It was delicious, but <laughs> I gave up my birthday beer because 
I could not stand to not have it here and 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 put it through the 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 test of rating. I, th- I think y'all need to to kind of have a secondary experience with so, us. So everybody, pat John on the back. He, uh, he 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 gave that up so we could enjoy this. Yeah. All right, well, big I mean, questions, big questions. Now, uh, let's let's start. I'll start it with it. Uh, Long War beer. Uh, only, only if you're you're planning on on mowing a very small chunk of chunk, chunk of your yard because in you're a gonna circle because you're stumbling in, in a circle, yeah, yeah. Uh, not a lawnmower beer at all. Uh, um, date beer, date beer, John. Um, see, this is a tough one. This is a tough one because I could say this is an early date beer, um, but it's I a feel weed out beer. <laughs> it's definitely a weed out beer, but I feel that that leads itself toward abuse. And and what I'm saying here, we we have a movement in this country, and I think rightfully so toward a very uh, uh, conscientious and and uh, explicitly um, uh, consensual use of, of sex and alcohol, right? And this thing is so smooth, you would never be able to tell it's an 11 point something until you start, your head starts spinning. And so I think this is this is a beer you need to save a little bit later, just for your own moral like. Uh, this, this, this is this is Bill Cosby's date beer. Exactly, this is <laughs> Bill Cosby date beer for sure. Uh, it's smooth, but you know what? If you and your special person are are at that level in your relationship where where you 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 wanna you wanna have a, a little bit of a higher ABV beer and have a good night, this is great for that. So I'm gonna say, with that said. I'm going to actually knock this one a little bit later in the relationship yeah. because uh, it does lend itself toward abuse so much. I'm going to say date six. I think by date six, you're, you're kind of in a thing. I would hope or at least have an understanding mm. of what's going on. Yeah. Oh, See, I was going to say, like, this beer will definitely get you laid, but Absolutely. that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It may lead to a charge after that. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe on a, a tasting date or something yeah. like that. But it is an impressive beer. It, it is. is. Absolutely. All right. So back to this idea of Shintoism. And uh, I, again, I'm, I hate using uh, Western terms because they don't fit exactly, but it helps us understand. Yeah. I want to talk about some of the schools of, of, of Shinto or the types or denominations, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, you have Shrine Shinto, which is it, it is without a doubt the most, the most uh, uh, prolific. Japan is is just loaded with these these shrines all over it. There are, uh, I think I, I read somewhere eighty thousand shrines in in Japan. Now some of those are are, are home shrines, but but a massive amount of of these shrines. And these are places most of the time your shrines are dedicated to a local regional kami, something whose job it is to protect that group of people. They tend to be uh, fertility gods. Uh, and and whenever you show up at these at these these shrines, you're expected to bring uh, 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 gifts to the gods, uh, gifts of wine or or rice or there, there's all these uh, money, all of these things are, are there, and you go through the ritual purification at, 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 uh, of this and, and and leave these these gifts for the gods. I, I gotta ask now, yeah. where did the gift go? They go to the uh, to to operating the shrine. Okay, uh, and and some of these are very elaborate. Some of these are to the extent that uh, uh, you know there, there's there's they're in the forest, and the forest is the gods and the trees. They're they're trying to maintain all of this and and, and keep it at this. So level. it kind of and and we can probably look into it, each individual one and find out where funds are going. But it's kind of like these nonprofit historical foundations that are set up to to. Um, to to keep, maintain these shrines and it's a donation toward them. Now there's a religious aspect there to is, it, but but it's it's kind of that idea. They are uh, and and and, and to, you know kind of to take care of that region and and a lot of these apparently uh, uh, go back and they the money goes back into the community to to take care of things. So it's uh, it, it's it's kind of a way of of taking care of yourself. Now we find that that these shrines, uh, you know, that they they rose up during the Meiji Restoration during this time period when the the Japanese royal family was coming back into power after the after the warlord period and all this, and at, at least at first they were almost always uh, somehow attached to or associated with a Buddhist shrine. Mm-hmm. So it's like you'd go, you're a Buddhist, and you'd go to your your Buddhist temple to do your your your, your duties, but then you would stop by the other uh, the other temple there and 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 present to to your kami that you uh you know to to, to protect your your local area. Um, 
that's that's the one that a lot of people participate in. Uh, and again, a lot of these people are Buddhist and Shinto. Uh, there's the there's the imperial household Shinto, which is uh, it, it's it is reserved strictly to the the family of the emperor. They're the only ones that can enter the shrine. They uh, they make special uh, 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 dispensations to the gods, to the kami, particularly to Amaterasu Omikami, and they go through these rituals at, at key periods of time to bless the entire entirety of the nation. Uh, so that's a very exclusive type of, of Shinto that's out there. Um, you have a, a folk Shinto out there, which is uh, very much, uh, it, it's kind of akin to folk healing in other, other religions. Mm -hmm. it's, these, it's this type of Shinto where where, with, with a lot of magic involved and a lot of uh, of potions and stuff and and healing of the people. Snake handling. Uh, yeah, with, yeah, I think you could compare it with that. You can compare it with, uh, uh, like the uh, in, in in the Western world. You Nasal could. parties. Well, I was I was thinking about about uh, Romani, yeah. uh, the the idea of of, of magic while well, in your religion. Um, a lot of the practices of this come out of Taoism. So there, it's this idea of, of the Chinese idea coming in and, and, and coming through. And if uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say here and interject a little bit, if you want to learn more about Taoism and the Tao Te Ching, uh, our episodes are behind a paywall now, but you can uh, go to our Patreon and become a patron and get access to those back episodes. $5 as, a month or more. As well as live streams and other perks. And you can actually hear us talk about Taoism. Yeah, yeah, and that was that, that was, was a fun a, one. that was it was a really interesting one. Let's uh, let, let's kind of talk about this idea of uh, of how you go about purifying yourself because purification is something that that's important. Um, when you enter a Shinto shrine, there's a there's a large um, um, what would be the word. There's water there for you, and, and, and mm -hmm. they've got the ladles. And you come up here, and you you pull. We take your right hand, and you get the water, and you pour it on your left hand, so your left hand is pure. Then you switch the ladle to the left, and you purify your right hand with that. And then you pour a little water in your hand, and you swish it around your mouth, and and and, and you know, there's all these steps that you have to do to, to cleanse yourself before you go before you even enter the temple. Um, Stuff that I wasn't really aware of when I was until I started reading this, um, I knew there were some, but the comparisons these are so similar to the same practices that go on in Islam uh, mm -hmm. before you enter, uh, you know, before you enter a, a mosque in Islam. Mm -hmm. The fact of, of ritual purification, um, to the extent that there's even a variation here where. That, that we find in Islam too, that if water is not available, that you can purify with sand. You can pick up dirt and sand and, 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 and clean yourself with it to, uh, to purify yourself. So again, we've got this 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 thing there that was just incredibly compare are, are, are close to something something else that was going on. What do y'all think about that? This idea of ritual pur pur purity. I. I... I'm I'm not familiar with it from a first-hand perspective, although from an academic perspective, uh, when we talk about ritual, I, I I connect most with the connect by uh, understand best the Jewish traditions, and and we see a lot of the ceremonial type stuff there, uh, but I think it 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 all kind of gets back to this idea we were talking about earlier about magic invoked by ceremony and and trying to endow yourself with power and maybe in this case just the power to be in the presence of great power you know that it, it's kind of an elevation of of the power of the the gods or the priests but you know it it, it doesn't i'm going to say resonate with me as a person that much yeah. the uh the ritual i i suspect um I guess I would be willing to bet that a good number of the people who are performing these rituals, and this is this has been my own experience um, from people I've known in very ritual-based religions, um, don't necessarily believe, for instance, in transubstantiation. Don't literally believe that it is the 
body of Christ, yeah, that it's yeah. the blood of Christ. It's symbolic. Um, but that these rituals put you, they are a physical act that takes you from your everyday mindset and puts you in the mindset of why you're there and what it is you're there for. Uh, those are the same thing. Why you're there and what it is that you should be doing. Um, and so I don't necessarily, I, I would be surprised if I were to find out that the majority of these people actually believe that they are somehow being magically purified, um, but rather that it's a process that they can walk through to go from the stress and the anxiety and the, the you know, what is, what are we cooking for dinner today? What projects do I have going on at work? You know, um, is my grandmother going to get well again? Is my child going to learn to read or are they going to be a... I don't know, bumbling idiot. Um, <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> Are they going to be yes. a genius or a podcast uh, host? Yeah, 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 gotcha. Okay, Mike. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of setting aside all of those things and bringing yourself into focus for what you're there for. You know, it's, it's... You can do that at work, too. You can do that at home. When you come home, yeah. you set down your laptop case, your suitcase, whatever it is. You take off your jacket. You... Um, Rub take sand off, all over yourself. Yeah, or that. You take off your <laughs> That's shoes. What I do. You, um, you know, go get a glass of wine, wash your face, whatever it is. You have kind of a ritual that you do to shed the day's work and the day's burdens yeah, I, and come into the mindset you're in at home. Well, I, I think it's interesting you bring that up because I was I was actually listening to a uh, and I don't remember if this is a YouTube channel or podcast, but the the point is it was a skeptic and atheist, and he was talking about. Am I saying the right word here? Transubstantiation is that where the the crackers turn to the That's blood? Where of, it actually the, turns the, to the blood and body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was talking about this, and he he learned about this in his his Catholic. You know, Sunday school, I, I guess it's what they call it in, in Catholic religion. I don't know. Um, but he was learning about this and he said, oh, that's so cool. It turns to the body of Christ. Well, I got an idea. I got this microscope. We'll bring it up here and we'll do the little ceremony and we'll, uh, uh, you'll get the cracker and we'll, we'll watch what happens and we'll watch it turn. To Wouldn't that be the most amazing thing to see? But, but that was his understanding of this. When he was told about this whole thing, he was like, that's amazing. Let's research it. Right. And you talk about, well, I don't think most people actually believe that it puts them into a mindset, but I wonder if that's a hard divide in the way people are wired in the skeptic community and non-skeptic community where some people hear this bread turns into the body of Christ and they say, oh, that's some emotional internal thing that happens in my mind and it puts me in a mindset and I kind of envision as, and I just think about Christ. And then other people hear this bread turns into the body of Christ. They say, oh, really? Oh, cool. Let's, let's test that and play with that. Right. We're all cannibals. And, and, yeah. Well, and I, I think that, um, I'm about to get cynical here. I think that... About to get? <laughs> more cynical. <laughs> the vast majority of religions' sole purpose is to control people. I, I don't think that that's something that can be argued, but it's been argued to me before that that's not the case. Um, their goal is to control people. They're telling children that this, this dry, bready thing literally turns into flesh that is then okay to eat. Um, and yes, children are believing that. But in that same story, what did the Sunday school teacher do? Oh, no, 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 no. We can't do that. No, 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 no. And yeah. I, th I think she even kicked him out. Yeah, she, she, yeah. she ends up kicking him out. And, it, yeah. and he talks about his support. Like, he's not allowed in Sunday school anymore. Like, yeah. Well, I was just trying but, to bring my, my, my and microscope because, and find the, you know. That's yeah. because she didn't believe it. She knew that it wasn't real. She knew that all that was was a, a symbolic ritual to serve a purpose and put people into a mindset. Yeah, I, and the vast majority of people, I genuinely believe, do not actually believe in those little magic things. I, I, I would argue that, that, that I, I don't think that, that the purpose of religion is to control people. I do think that 
that a byproduct of religion is to control and that, that it, it can be abused for that. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I, th- I think the purpose of religion is to explain the unexplainable, just like I science think, is. Uh, now, uh, 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 but, but, but I do think that it can be abused that way. I also, I'm, I'm going to go back, back to transubstantiation because I grew up in, I grew up in a church that did not teach that. that, that, it, that they taught that it was symbolic. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that most people recognize that that's symbolic. Yeah. But there are those that do not, that, that believe that it literally turns into that. Uh, I, I have a hard time understanding that. But, right. But there are. Uh, but back to the idea that you had earlier of, of you know, uh, that this is all cleaning. Your, I think it was you that said that it, it, it's symbolic to clean your, your, yourself. Well, you know. In Western, in, 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 in the Christian tradition, there's baptism. The, and some people see that as a ceremonial washing away of sin. And some people see it as we're putting magic water on you and you're changing mm-hmm. to something else. And I think in that case, a lot more people believe it's magic water than than, than would uh, transubstantiation. Um, and I don't see a difference between the the person who believes in uh, in in uh, baptism and the person that believes that before I go in this temple, I have to wash my hands and face. Yeah. It's just repeated baptism. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that the, most, I don't think one is more ridiculous than the other. I think most people um, who subscribe to those beliefs would tell you that they believe that it's magic, but when pressed would not actually uh, I, I, exhibit the signs of believing that it was magic i don't I, I i have to disagree with you but but it's a fair point well and and, and i i i think that's that's i think there are points to be made on both sides and, and i wonder how much social pressure plays into this uh the the old um kind of i don't even, even know what's called but the 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 christians rebut to, to to the the skeptic is like you know when you're in a foxhole and you're being shot at and all these horrible things are happening um are you you gonna sit there and just die? Are you you gonna you're gonna ask for for God to help you? And and a lot of a lot of religious people I think connect with that because that's what they would do. Yeah. Um. I, I think that there is a a rebut to be had on on what you instinctually believe at the very least, because a shooter walks into a school or a, a grenade gets thrown into a room you're in. The first thing that most people do, religious or not, is not drop to their knees and pray. It's trying to get out the door. Yeah. They run. Right. And and so I think that whether or not they believe in the real magic of these ceremonies, they absolutely have a lesser amount of most have a lesser amount of faith in the magic of the ceremonies than they do in the sheer horsepower of their legs to move them across the field. Well, I, I, I think that's fair. Well, yeah. and I'm not saying that I think they don't believe in God. I yeah. do. I genuinely believe that they believe that there is a divine creator out there. I'm saying that the earthly ceremonies that are purported to be magical, that most people don't actually believe that they're magical. I, I I I think I would I, the, the word magic is is, is rough there, but I think yeah. I would I think I would disagree with you. But 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 again, I think there's room for for, for both, mm-hmm. and part of that is my background because mm-hmm. I grew up in a Christian church that taught that uh, that baptism was symbolic and mm-hmm. that taught that that the Last Supper or, or you know was symbolic. Mm-hmm. So I I have a hard time. I was not taught it was magical. Mm-hmm. I was taught that it was to remind you of something. Mm-hmm. You know, you uh, the reason you're baptized is to remind you and to publicly show that you have a faith. Yeah, I it's think not it, some, it's not it's not magic water changing you. Yeah, I, I think in Christianity the litmus test for this is how they're taught, and I, I don't I don't know the the, the specific uh, reference to it, but the verse about the faith of a mustard, a, a mustard seed can move mountains, and whether they interpret that to mean you can overcome great obstacles. Because I've been in churches where they have taught that you can literally earth move, you can literally harness the power of dynamite and 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 bulldozers with the faith of a mustard seed. Yeah, and, pray hard enough and anything and will happen. Where that falls, in fact, uh, she, uh, Anastasia has a friend who who literally has taken uh, 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 career goals and and these kind of things. 
and literally said that their strategy It'll is to pray pray hard. pray hard enough yeah. about it and they'll, they'll they'll accomplish things like becoming a great seamstress or becoming a great actress be, through then, their yeah. their prayer powers and so i think i think there's probably there's probably people that fall on both sides of that yeah. limits yeah. test yeah, yeah. I, I think you're probably right and i think that's a fair way to look at it I want to move uh, while we're in in the, the magic. And again, I, I'm, I'm not trying to take light of somebody's mm -hmm. religion yeah, or to absolutely. be disrespectful. Right. The word magic is not uh, it's not meant that way. It's just it's a way of, of explaining things. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's let's talk about some of the magic of Shintoism here with amulets, talisman, uh, the, the kind of things they have. When you go to a Shinto shrine, one of the things they have is they have these they have these these, these wooden boards called imma. Uh, and I'm, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong because I'm pronouncing it like an East Texan. But that's probably Ima, but something to that effect. But this wooden board that would have a, a picture of, 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 of a local god or something on it or a name of a god. And you would write down what you wanted to happen on this, this, this wooden plank and place it somewhere in the shrine. And sometimes that's out in the woods or something. But you'd place it somewhere in this Shinto shrine as a way of communicating with the god and asking for, uh, you know, for, for, for fulfillment or for help with this, what do you think about that idea? I I, I found that fascinating. I, I find it very akin to the Western idea of of the and we we've, we've moved it to electronics here in the twenty first century, but the the idea of the prayer list or the the the. Uh, you know, and, and some of them are anonymous for the idea that you're going to throw it out there and a lot of people are going to pray. But the very idea of, of documenting your needs, and sometimes it has a very real effect of once people know, uh, now some say it's because they feel a tug from God or, or felt led to help. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, others may argue that it was just because, well, they now knew someone needed help who was well, connected with them in some way. But uh, beyond that, it, 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 just the fact that you have recognized that you need this and have written it down, uh, you know, recognizes that there's a problem. And, and to, for you, there's a psychological yeah. value to writing down what you what you need. Well, and, and we can it's we can vision board. Yeah, we can talk about the Western tradition of, you know, some people do this on New Year's, writing down your, your, your problems or the things that are really torturing you and burning the piece of paper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I think I think there is there is something very real and psychological. You know, there. when I when I first read this, I thought, well, that's odd. We're just writing this, in, you know, writing this in chalk or something on this board and putting it out there. But then I remembered in in like 90, 1992 when I was a young marine, I was in Israel, and I went to the the Wailing Wall in in, in Jerusalem, the Western Wall. There had my yarmulke on because you have to to go up there in respect yeah. for the religion. And I remember writing down my problems and sticking it in the wall uh, because that's part of what they do there. I, I did that. I participated yeah. in that. Uh, you know, did you feel something when you did it? You know, what I felt is uh, I felt a comfort when I did it, but I don't yeah. think it was a comfort of I, I believe that that magically this is going to be solved. It was I recognize that I have have this issue and I'm putting it out here. Yeah. And it, You're it, leaving it, it behind. It, it took a weight off yeah. my shoulder yeah. when I did it. It's uh, powerful, no doubt. Uh, and I think that that may be part of what's happening here with this idea of of, of, of the Ema. Uh, yeah. But I, I find that that interesting. Uh, there's also different talismans that are made, and they're made from uh, uh, wood or metal or paper or whatever they have. Can, can well, I ask a question about yeah. the Welling Wall? Yeah. Do they collect those at some point so there's more room in the wall for more, or do they just sit? You know, I don't know, yeah. but they were they were they, they they were packed. It was hard to find a crack you could stick it in. So I I, I assume they do. Uh, you just pull somebody else's out, throw it on the ground. And yeah, your problem. That seems good. like an asshole move. I'm not. Advocating you know what else that. just occurred to me? You know, is this different than than the bridge in Paris? Where uh, whenever you're whenever you're in love with somebody, you put the lock on it and lock it. So to, 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 you know, they tore that down, by the way, because it was it, yeah. the weight had gotten so bad that it was dangerous. Yeah, that but, wall is going to crumble on somebody someday because there's been so much stress from people like shoving shit <laughs> into its cracks. Well, it's that wall been standing for about 2,000 years, so I think it's probably... So it's about due. It's, it's <laughs> 2,000 a first year that gets you, right? Yeah, it, it, it's got to be a breaking point sometime. But what do you think about this idea of these shrines that are issuing these 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 uh, these talismans that you carry with you? With, and they've, you know, it's it's the god of... You know, it's, it's just something saying that the god of this temple is with you. It sounds to me like the St. Christopher's or Yeah, the or Catholic something. tradition of, of my favorite saint or yeah, my, or, you know. Or the, the Jewish star, Tar of David, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I send my son to school with a talisman. It's a rubber band that says pay attention. 
that he wears <laughs> yeah, around his I wrist. Think, I think that's something real. I yeah, mean, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But, it is a reminder of something that you are supposed to keep in mind and, and be cognizant of every moment of your life. You know, I had uh, I had friends in the Marine Corps that, that uh, I, I had two buddies who, who were second or third generation Marines, and uh, they wore their father's dog tags all the time yeah. to remind them of, of, of their duty, you know, and I think that's a Carrying similar thing. pictures of your wife thing. or your kids or your, you know, life partner so or whatever it is. So your wife and your girlfriend, do you keep those? Right on by, opposite sides oh, okay. of your hat. So, okay. so when you're on your third bottle of Cooper, Cooper <laughs> Air, Works, uh, uh Territorial uh, reserve. Uh, reserve bourbon arrow. Uh, wow, that wine, that beer really did a number on it you. Did. Didn't it did bourbon barrel aged barley wine L. You can remember. Oh yeah, I'm married. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've also got something called the uh, Amikuji uh, or Amikuhi, which is <laughs> it's sheets of paper that, that 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 give you words of wisdom. It's a fortune cookie, is what it is. Without the cookie, uh, but that, that you would gather, and it was just to remind you. It was something that said, you know, do a good job today, like you were talking about, or pay attention, yeah. or something. Uh, great things will come to you. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to talk shit about the religion or any religions when I compare them to things that we do in our everyday lives. No, that's, that's the object like, here. I'm just yeah. kind of trying to relate it to. Yeah, we do things in religion and in our everyday lives that have so much crossover but that we think are so separate yeah and yeah they're just they're not yeah I, I again i think it comes back to this idea and the longer i study the more i think that there's something intrinsic in human need in some of this stuff where we need these things and we find a way to to make it work mm -hmm. uh you know and, and and we all find different ways to do it uh I tell you, I was a lot more comfortable, and, and Shinto does not seem nearly as foreign to me after yeah. after this as it did when I started. Mm -hmm. And I, I I took a I took a semester class in this, uh, you know, years and years ago, and came out of it thinking that it was as foreign as it as it as, as anything. Mm -hmm. But drawing these comparisons, this is something that I could I could understand. I could I, yeah. I could get it. I understand why you know they talk about the. Uh, you know the shrines you would have at home to your ancestors, so you would you would go visit that shrine every day. It's the well, urn you put on your mantle. It, but yeah, or or the picture of your grandfather that you keep. Uh, you, you know, so when you walk by, you go. I probably shouldn't be an asshole, Grandpa. Grandpa. Yeah, you know, he's he's watching. He he's said, watching. "Don't be an asshole." He reminded was, me, yeah. "Don't be an asshole." You know, yeah. and uh, I, and I wonder if that's not the same. Thing. And invest. And diversify. Oh. No, he just he just. That was my grandpa. He just said, "Don't be an asshole." He said, "Plastics are the future." So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's kind of Shinto in a nutshell. Obviously, we didn't go in uh, a whole lot of detail, but I think if you uh, if you had weren't familiar with it, you at least have a passing understanding. Yeah, of it. I think it's Shinto one on one for a Westerner. Yeah, and and uh, Easterners are going to look at this and say, "Well, they missed all kinds of stuff," but uh, it's it's trying to bring people who have never been exposed to that and who are of a Western mindset and kind of bring them a step closer to our Eastern brothers and sisters. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It, it, it's about, it's about understanding each other, respecting each other. Um, yeah. and you know, sometimes making fun of each other too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we do a show on the human condition at some point or is that kind of just every show we, we do? we've, we've touched on it on, I think of it's life so as many. a stage yeah. uh, as a show. Uh, we've touched on it here and there. Uh, I don't know if the the human condition can fit into a show. I think, I think that's a podcast. Maybe yeah, it you is. Know? Yeah. That's a yeah. whole po If you want to do a podcast on the human condition, let us know. Yeah. Um, but this was fun. This was uh, made even better by this by this barley wine that we yeah, had. It was. So it was very good. Uh, I I did enjoy that. Hey, if anybody else enjoys this show, what could they do to help us out, John? Uh, they can, they can go to patreon.com. Our show is wholly a uh, fan funded experience uh our equipment our uh time everything our beer itself um, and it's a lot of time it's a lot of times a lot of effort but we enjoy it we've had fun with it and we plan to continue and if you could help support us uh in making sure we're able to continue uh the best way to do that is go to sixpackphilosophy.com uh and Help us find the other people who would enjoy this show. Mm -hmm. Share with your friends. Share, share, share. Uh, we have we have swag in the swag shop. Uh, that's at Teespring. Teespring. Uh, yep, and we have well, 
Anna's sporting our newest shirt there the, with, with the, the new six-pack logo. John is sporting a little older version of yep. it with the six-pack philosopher. I'm sporting a Q-tip shirt, so I'm, I'm, I'm if not If you want to go to Q-tip <laughs> School Hall in Dexville, Texas. It's also fun yeah. if you're in the area. And, uh, you know, we've got the, the canvas here, too. There's, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of stuff you can get out there. So, uh, you know, log on and uh, help us out, brothers and sisters. Help us out. It's a lot of fun. All right. With that, thank you guys so Whoa. much. Whoa. You trying to do it again? If you've enjoyed this show and we don't put out enough content for you and you want to check out another show, I'm going to recommend this week Holy Orders. Uh, Holy Orders is a philosophy show. It's a bit deeper, I'm going to say, in, in, in its ideas. The, uh, produce, the, the, the main host of this podcast, and I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he... Uh, is a has a doctorate of philosophy he's taught philosophy and he got really interested in his younger years in eastern philosophy and actually ends up traveling uh i'm not going to say where he traveled to because i'm gonna lie somewhere in asia um somewhere uh, in the east yeah somewhere in the east he actually ends up traveling out there and and kind of uh, uh, uh diving into there and one of his his big this is a newer podcast just started either late last year or, or this year, but one of his big things is to challenge the way you think about things and the biases you have as a Westerner. And he, he, he talks a lot about Cartesian thinking and um, the way that it skews your everyday life. I've listened to it. I've really enjoyed the journey of coming to terms uh, and and kind of internalizing the ideas that he's put forward. I haven't agreed with all of them. I haven't disagreed with all of them. I think there's some great stuff there. But if you want to hear this, check it out. Holy orders. Uh, the one thing I'll warn you about, it's a bit. It's one person. Holy like entire. Yes. It, by the way, it's W H O L L Y. Yeah. Um, one thing I will warn about, it is a single guy talking, so there's a lot less banter in it. It's a lot more serious. And, Wouldn't it be funny if he bantered with himself, though? Yeah. And he is a bit slower and more methodical in the way it's that way he more talks. Way more in-depth. Yeah. And, but he is responsive also, so you can tweet him as well, and he'll he'll get back with you. And, and anyway, that's my recommendation. Holy orders. Fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed it. We have. I have. I don't know about these guys. Uh, tune in next week. We'll be here again, just like always. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. I, want... I thought it was a good sound. It was good. I want more drinks. It's very loud. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.